bless you on this morning. David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and his mercy endures unto all generations. Kind and gracious Heavenly Father, God, we come before you, O oh God, with thanksgiving and praise on our hearts and on our lips. Father God, thanking you for you and you alone are worthy of all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Now, Father God, your word says, if you be lifted up from the earth, you will draw all men unto yourself. So, Father, on this morning, we lift up the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who was able to save us to the uttermost. Father, we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit even right now, that it will go before us and that will bust up the follow ground. Father, I ask you to anoint these lips of clay on this morning. Father God, I ask you to hide me behind the cross of Calvary that your word may go forth without distraction. Father, also I ask you to touch the ears of the hearers on today. Father God, we come against every deaf and dumb spirit, oh God. Every spirit that tries to hinder this work on today. Father, I ask you to bless your churches, your, your ministry that's going around the world even right now. Father, we ask for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit on this morning. For, oh God, we need you now more than ever. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We give you all of the glory and we give you all of the honor. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we do pray. Thank God and amen, amen. Well, so good to stand before you guys and to be in the house of the Lord one more time in the land of the living. Thank God for our pastor and our leader. On today, we ask God to continue to touch him and keep him in your good and perfect will. Father, we also ask you to touch Pastor Crampton on this morning. Father God, you said you sent the word and they were healed. So, Father, we speak healing in the mighty name of Jesus, not only over Pastor Crampton, but for all those who may be ailing on today, physically, mentally, oh God, we know that you're able to do all things but fail. And we also know that there is not nothing too hard for the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, I won't be before you guys too long. Uh-oh. You know, you got to watch out <laughs> when, when preachers say they won't be before you too long. Usually they may be a little bit long, but I just pray that the Holy Spirit will have his way in me on this morning. I ask that I would decrease and that God will increase on this morning. I wanted to come to you today and talk about the subject. He came to set the captives free. Jesus came to set the captives free. Um, so about almost, I would say maybe 15 years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that, like I'm getting old. <laughs> I was on my way to church with my kids. And um, on that morning, Holy Spirit gave me a, a scripture to read. And the scripture was found in uh, Luke, the fourth chapter. And it was life transforming for me. I mean, the Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among them, us. And so the word has to become a part of us for it to be real. This word is live, it's active, it's powerful than any two-edged sword. And so on this morning, the Lord had that morning, the Lord gave me a particular scripture as I was on my way to service with me and my children. And my 
second oldest girl. Now she was the youngest girl at that time. Uh, she had um, basically gave me the same scripture that the Lord had gave her, but she gave it to me from the Old Testament. And so before I get ahead of myself, I want to read the word of God, and then I'm going to come back to uh, what happened that day. So today we will be starting, we will be reading from the book of St. Luke, the fourth chapter, and we will start at the 14th verse. And the Bible reads as follows. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And the news of him went out through all the surrounding regions. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And it was handed to him the book or the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Hallelujah. Woo. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. He came to set the captives free. The Bible declares over in, it might be 1 Corinthians 14, 2 and 14, and it just simply says this. I want to make sure I give it to you right or don't give it to you at all. Amen. <laughs> He says in 1 Corinthians 2 and 14 says this. No, I'm getting ahead of myself. Thank you, Jesus. It says who the son says free. He's free indeed. Jesus came to set us free. To set us free from the oppression of sin. To set us free from the oppression of sickness and death. He led captivity captive. They all were bound. The Bible also says over in Ephesians chapter 4, I'll be able to find it because I'm going to slow down a little bit. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 and 6 says this. It says, to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of of Christ's gift. Therefore, he said, he ascended on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts to, to men. Now, now this, he ascended, what does it mean? But he also first descended unto the lower parts of the earth. He was who ascended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he may feel all things. Jesus went into the lower parts before he ascended and he preached the good news to all those who believed, all those who were in that holding place, I believe, where, where uh, uh, Abraham was saying in the bosom of Abraham, and he said, come on, because you're going, I'm going to be the, he's the first of many brothers. He's the first from the dead. Amen. And so 
He said that the spirit of the Lord God was upon him for he has anointed me to preach. So I told you when I first started, my daughter, out of 66 books in the Bible and so many thousands and thousands of pages, the Lord gives me this scripture in the, Old, in the New Testament. He gave me that morning, he gave me Luke chapter 4, verses 18. So as we were on our way to church, my daughter tells me this. She said, Daddy. I want you to hear this word. And she begins to read. I didn't know where she was going. She begins to read from Isaiah 61, which says this. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to mourn all, to comfort all who mourn, to console all those who mourn in Zion, to give beauty for ashes, the oils of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I'm going to tell you right now, church, when that little girl told me that, my head fell back into the headrest of that car and tears began to stream down my eyes. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. Oh, my God. And the love that God has for us, God loves us so much that he would confirm his word through a young girl at that time. When he said he came to heal the brokenhearted, how is he healing us? Through his outstretched arms wrapped around us. Just like he was on the cross with outstretched arms saying, come all you who are weary and heavy laden, let me give you rest. Come, come, come learn of me. For I'm easy. I'm not hard. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. I'm not here to harm you. I'm here to set you free. Ooh, somebody gonna get some deliverance today because that's what he came for. That was his whole purpose. In the first word of prophecy, in the book of Genesis 3 and 15, after Satan did what he did, the Lord said, I'm going to put enmity between me and thee and between thy woman's seed and between thy seed. And he will bruise his heel and crush your head. Isaiah was prophesying of the salvation that was to come over in Isaiah 61. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And now Jesus picks it up. He picks up a scroll and he opens it up right at that very point, just like it happened for me. But the story didn't end there. Let me t finish telling you guys. So as I got to church that morning, there was a liquor store across the street. So I needed to get some change. And you know, you've been at church for a long time. You need some gum. <laughs> I call it church candy. <laughs> so got some church candy. And I went in the store, and there was a young lady in there who I never met. And she just came up to me. And God, through his spirit, gave me a soft heart for her. And I knew something was wrong. And the Lord allowed me to pray for this young lady inside of a liquor store early in the morning right before church. And the girl lifted her hands up and began to cry out and to thank God. That's because the spirit of the Lord God was in me. Not only is the spirit in me, the spirit of the Lord God is on each and every one of us. 
all those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, he is with us. He said he will never leave us nor forsake us. He said, don't even take a script for what you're going to say. Because <laughs> at that very hour, I will give it to you. It's a difference from being gifted and being anointed. We could be gifted and that's good. But we understand that it's the anointing of God that destroys every yoke. It's the anointing of God that breaks every chain. So Jesus, this is right after he was baptized and the spirit of God came upon him in a bodily form just like a dove. And you heard the Lord voice come down and said, that is my son whom I'm well pleased. Right after that, the Bible says that he was led in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Sometimes the problems that you go through in life are not because you did anything, but it's to prove who is on the inside of you. That precious flower that smells so good, but it has to go through a beating process to get the true essence of what's on the inside. That olive the same way. Some people like them, some people don't. But that's going through this beating and crushing process that brings forth the oil. We got to be like the wise virgins. We need that extra oil on today, Lord. We don't want to go and buy. And then you come when we go in to buy because we're not carrying the extra oil. Oil, symbolic of the Holy Spirit. He says, he anoints my head with oil in Psalms, the 23rd. You used to have a dog that used to be outside. I don't know if I told y'all. And now, you know, we bring the dogs in. But back in the day, they stayed outside in the doghouse. And, you know, and in the summertime, these bugs... The flies, the parasites, would start biting on the end of the dog's nose and would bite on the dog's ears. And so the remedy to stopping the bugs from biting them, we would put oil on the dogs. So when the bugs got ready to bite, to, to eat it up, it slipped off. God places his anointing on each and every one of us so when there's parasites, when the demonic forces try to come to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell, according to the word. Oh, boy. Hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I'm getting happy now. Oh, my goodness. So he says, starting at 14, he says, Jesus returned in the power of the spirit. We need the spirit of God. It was almost like you guys set it up. It was almost like a car. Y'all were singing about the spirit of God. You were singing about his praises. You were singing about his glory. You were singing about his honor. Oh my God, I was sitting there losing my mind. I've been waiting to get up in church to praise God. We've been through so much hell. I can say that in there. Hell, we went through. It's not that we stay in there. The Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's been a shadow of death all over us. People who have lost their lives, but God has kept us. God gets the glory. No one can say because I wash my hands or wear a mask. It was because God kept you. If it wasn't because of God's mercy, we would have been consumed already. Oh, my goodness. Whoo, my, my, my. So, says Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and the news of him went throughout the surrounding regions. 
and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. You know what made Jesus so powerful too? The Bible says that when he taught, he taught as one with what? Authority. The Holy Spirit had quite, not because he went to seminary, not because he did all of this and all of that, but because the Holy Spirit was upon him to destroy every yoke, to break every chain, to set the captives free, to bind up the brokenhearted. People are hurting. People are depressed. Strongholds have got people bound. Joyce Meyer said the battlefield is in the mind. Some people running and ain't nobody chasing them. This devil is real. But God is realer. God is the ultimate power. Holy Spirit is the ultimate power. And the earth. Jesus said, I must ascend so I can send one just like me who's a comforter, who will lead you and guide you in all truth and bring everything back to your remembrance. We're not that smart, but he is. And through him, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, putting on the full armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So he came to Nazareth as he was brought up, and as it was his custom, the Bible says do not forsake the assembly of themselves like the others do. We coming together over Zoom. We coming together over the internet. We coming together in the home, but we still come together because we are the body of Christ. Mm, 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 mm. Let me see. I don't go over last time. I okay. It was Jesus. Now wait a minute. It was Jesus' custom. Now if Jesus went to church, what excuse do we got? If Jesus, the Son of God, could come to church every single week as it was His custom, we are without excuse. He is the one we are to follow. He is the perfect example. We used to have the West names. What would Jesus do? What would he do? He would go to church. He would go to Bible school, Bible study. He would come to Sunday school. He went so much, he started teaching. He was 12 years old. They all sitting there. Now he teaching. Because what you get, God not just giving it to us so we can say we got it, but God is placing the treasure in us because when he come back, he won't interest, so he want us to be able to put it in banks. He said, I get a treasure I put in you, and I want you to take that treasure that I put in you, and I want you to pour it out in somebody else. That's why I love this church. Because even through a pandemic, you've been here helping hands. Thank God about her. Still trying to find a way to feed the kids, to do what we have to do. Because at the end of the day, God has placed a talent in each and every one of us. And he going to come to see if we did the right thing for what he gave us. So it was Jesus' custom. He went into the synagogues on the Sabbath day, Saturday, or on Sunday. He stood up to read. We lost that in the church. We lost the standing up to read in the reverence, for the reverence of the word. We used to read, sometimes we get long with it. If I'm going to read the whole chapter then y'all just go ahead and sit down. But if they stood up for the reading of the word, why don't we? I'm just thinking out loud. And he handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he has opened it, he handed it to them, and he found the place where it was written. Watch this. He said, the Spirit. Remember, the Old Testament Spirit came and then left. Now the Spirit takes up residence. 
And each and every one of us now, we become carriers of his presence. And everywhere we go, we shift the atmosphere. People putting their cigarettes out. They try not to cuss because they can recognize the God on the inside of you, on the inside of me. We carry in his presence now. We shift in atmospheres. The devil matters. I don't know what it means right now. And I wouldn't care because he's not my friend. Remember, a house divided can't stand. Anyway, he says the Spirit of the Lord God's because he's anointed me. You got to be anointed for this. You remember over in um, Corinthians, I don't know if it's one or two, it says, that there's a great and effectual door being opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. But before it says that, it says, first, you must wait to what? Pentecost come. You got to wait till the Holy Spirit fall upon you so when this do double door open up, you could be able to withstand because you're going to have many adversaries. He says, he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, let me be clear. We always got poor with us. But he wasn't talking about the poor in money. He was talking about the poor in spirit. I sent you to proclaim the good news that they don't have to pay the penalty of sin because my blood paid for it. A life for a life. The, uh, Leviticus said the blood, the life was in the what? Blood. He said, I poured out my life for you. If I poured out my life for you, then you should be able to live for me. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind. Why are they blind? What is going on? So the Bible says in Corinthians, that's where I had my notes at. I think it's Corinthians chapter one. Let me get to it. I just all over the place today. Amen. So it's going to be in 2 Corinthians. Thank you, Jesus. Here we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 says this. Uh, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing because whose minds the little g God of this age has blinded who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Jesus Christ who is the image of God should shine on them for we do not preach ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your bond servant for Christ's sake for it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge and of the glory of God and the face of Christ Jesus. So he said he came for those who was blind to the recovery of sight. And you got to understand something as we preaching to them because they can't receive it is because the little G God of this world is blinding their minds. We're fighting a spiritual battle. We're not going to beat a spiritual battle with our flesh. We're not going to beat a spiritual battle doing protests. We're going to beat a spiritual battle on our knees. We're going to beat a spiritual battle pleading the blood of Jesus Christ, calling on the name of Jesus. This is how we battle. This is how we win. With our hands lifted, praising God. He said in the Old Testament, he said, I'll give you what? A spirit uh, 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 I'll give you beauty for ashes, a garment of what? Praise for the spirit of heaviness. Praise is a weapon. Whenever you're feeling low, when you're feeling down about yourself, don't put on that sad song. 
put that song on and lift up Jesus and now your countenance will be lifted up. Now you done lifted yourself up in the presence of God. Now you become undone because you figure you so insignificant and he's so holy. That's why I was over there crying. Oh, Lord, you so holy and I'm so messed up. But thank you for your love and your kindness, and your tender mercies. Let me let me keep it going. Ephesians 4 and 7 says this. But to each of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he said, when he ascended on high, oh, I think I did that earlier. He led captivity captive and gave men gifts. Now he ascended. What does it mean? But he also first descended into the lower parts. Who ascended, who descended is also the one who ascended far above heaven, that he may feel all things. It's him and him we live. And him we move. And in him we have our being. Hebrews 4 and 7 says, Today, if you hear my voice. Do not harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. So he says, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set liberty those who are oppressed, oppressed of the devil. God even told uh, uh, um, the enemy, one of the enemy's biggest tricks is discouragement and fear. He wants us to, because fear paralyzes you. And they had an acronym for fear a long time ago. They used to say fear is false evidence appearing real. And so God, through the apostle Paul, tells his spiritual son, Timothy, that God does not give us the spirit of fear. So what is spirit? What is, what is fear? A spirit. It's a spirit. We are fighting spiritual warfare. God don't give us that, but he gives us a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. This is what God gives his children. This is our inheritance. He also says to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then the Bible says that he closed the book and gave it to the attendant and he sat down. When he sat down, he wasn't finished. Now he really about to start teaching because he resting in the work that he already did. And he said to them, and then as their eyes were fixed on him, that's what got me. Their eyes were fixed on him. The Bible says over in Hebrews, I think chapter 12, it says, looking unto Jesus. Fix your eyes on him. They all, after he spoke, they all fixed their eyes on him. We have to fix our eyes on him. Looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is now set down at the right hand of majesty, with all glory, honor, and power. It's all his. He fulfilled all things, is what Ephesians just said before I read that. Then he says this to them, and he began to say to them, today, today, y'all, today, church, and whoever's listening to this, this scripture is fulfilled. In your hearing, God, the Son, is using the Holy Spirit now to fulfill the scriptures and each and every one of us now. You know why? Because we are his hands and his feet here to complete the work that Jesus started over 2,000 years ago. He came to set the captives free. And he want to use each and every one of us to free somebody else. Are you going to?
take the keys that God gave you, the keys to the kingdom? Are you going to open up the door and to free somebody on this week? Or are you going to be so religious and walk right past them while they're hurting? Or you're not going to be sensitive enough to the spirit and say you need to smile. Let's pull the mask down a little bit and say, hey, you doing, brother? Put it back up. We want to obey the laws of the land and God as well. Let the Lord use you on this week. Let him use you to free somebody. I thank God for my brother we were able to embrace today. People always tell you that they love you, but love is an action word. Jesus loved us so much that he was willing to die a horrible death that we may again have a right to the tree of life. He came to set us free. Gracious God, our Father. Oh God, we just thank you for your love for us. We thank you that you came to set us free, oh God. Help us, oh God, to seek you in everything that we do and say. That our lives may be found pleasing unto you. Lord, fill us with your spirit, oh God. Even on today, someone needs another touch from you. We say, Lord, here we are. We're yours. You are our father. We cry out, Abba, Father, unto you. We say, have your way in us, oh God. On earth or in this earthen vessel as it is in heaven, let your kingdom come and let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen.